Hmm. Maybe I have those mixed up. Oh, yeah. I think that one goes there. That one goes there. Don't you? Hickok 45 with a big gun and a little gun. This is the Mark 19 Desert Eagle. This is a car, <laughs> P380. Uh, coincidentally, they're made by the same company. Car owns uh, the company that makes the Desert Eagles now. So Magnum Research, so kind of interesting, huh? Yeah, I think this round, 50 Action Express, 50 AE would be very difficult to get into that firearm. So yeah, we have them straight. Now this one would not be hard to get into <laughs> the 50 caliber. Yeah, Hickok 45, and uh, this is a firearm we requested. I specifically chose this one because I thought the stainless was pretty cool, okay? I don't know, to me in a way, if I were gonna own this, uh, one of these, and of course I have to admit, I still own the 44 Magnum. I, I really shouldn't admit that. But I like this better than any of the other finishes, just the stainless. It's kind of a brushed stainless. So it's a really nice looking firearm, right? You know, <laughs> one everybody needs for their mantle. And uh, we're gonna shoot uh, American Eagle, well not American Eagle, but Federal Ammo Fusion, okay? They sent me several boxes of this. And uh, hence, that's why we're, we're about this, okay? I had requested it a while back because I knew we wanted to, to get a hold of one of these 50 Action Express and Desert Eagles because why am I uh, some sort of secret assassin, uh, mall ninja wannabe or whatever? Not really, but I've had so many people request it. They, they've they seen the 44 Magnum Desert Eagle that we did uh, and and just get a 50, get a 50. It's not a 50, get a 50. It's not a Desert Eagle unless it's a 50. And so, okay, I'm trying the 50. And I never fired one. So, uh, you know, I needed to put that on my resume. I fired a 50 AE Desert Eagle. So here we are with it. And, and again, we appreciate Bud sending us this thing. They're not cheap. Things are around 1800 uh, MSRP. Well, I don't know what the MSRP is actually, but uh, they uh, 1790 or something like that. A lot of money, okay? Uh, they're not three dollars or they're not four hundred dollars they're they're on up there uh so big cartridge and like i say this one's uh the mark 19 not to be confused with the grenade launcher the belt fed grenade launcher mark 19. this is a magazine fed grenade launcher okay and you'll see that when you start seeing these rounds go in wow and uh this is their pack of grenades they go right there 50 caliber that's pretty big. You folks up in Kentucky, my relatives, that's almost half an inch, 50 caliber. So pretty big diameter. Let's just go ahead and fire a couple of these things. And uh, we have a target rich environment in honor of this baby. You might, <laughs> you might have noticed. Let's just start bowling a little bit first though. Kachunk, see if it'll roll a bowling pin. Ooh boy, get those. Ears in tight, everybody. There's a little water in that thing. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Woo, there's another bowling pin. Yeah, it takes them off, doesn't it? Wow. And look, somebody put a pumpkin up on that barrel. Oh, didn't even knock it off. Well, I might have a solution for that. <laughs> oh well, all the water's gone. Let's shoot that guy. <laughs> oh boy. The rounds are only a couple dollars, 250 a, a shot. So you know, we'll just shoot as many as we want, right? So uh, yeah, those are grenades being launched, no doubt about it. Interesting firearm. Uh, I mean, no matter how much you want to hate on a Desert Eagle, they seem to be made well. And uh, I could take it apart, I guess. I don't know if you want to see that or not. I'll fumble around with it a little bit here before we blast some other things here. The way you do that is make sure it's unloaded. Pull the trigger and cock it to the first click there. Safety on. And then you push the button here. Push down the lever. Over there, and the barrel wants to pop right off. These are very interesting. I, I won't go into a lot of the 
stuff I did on the first one with the, the 44 Magnum. You can check out that video. I'll try to remember to put a link to it. Uh, but uh, the history of the company and all that I talked about in that. And this one is different. It's, uh, you know, it's 50 and it's a newer one, the Mark 19. That was a Mark 7, the other one, I believe. But you notice again, the barrel is, that is the barrel of the firearm. And it has a little hole there. I don't know if you can see that. I think I pointed that out in earlier videos, but there's a little hole there at the bottom of the chamber. And that's the, the gas port basically. So when you fire it, the gas goes down into that and up under the barrel, there's a, uh, a channel and inside the barrel. And, it, and you see how that's put together there. Uh, it comes out right there against this gas piston right here which forces the slide back. Okay, so we'll pick up another round. You got springs there. So pretty interesting how that works. It just pushes the slide back, more like a rifle. I won't take that off, I guess no need to now. You got your dual springs there. I've added parts several times, but, uh, and it, uh, you know, it's, it's an incredible system. It's more like a rifle system. And along the same lines, that barrel, it reminds you of with that lug, there's lugs on that bolt. Reminds you of an AR almost, doesn't it? The way it locks up. So, interesting system, no doubt about it. Uh, but it, it tends to work pretty well. See if I can get her back together. She's definitely not loaded. So I'll do this. Let's see, I need to push forward on that. And then, there we go. I'm gonna get it flush there. You push that lever back up. Okay. There we go, all right. Safety was on. There we go. Big monstrosity. You know, these things have been around since the late 80s. And, you know, uh, Mag uh, Magnum Research uh, Incorporated came up with them. They went through a lot of changes. They were made over by uh, uh, IMI, Israeli Military Industries, and IWI, and then moved back to this country and were manufactured by different companies. But they're, they've always been, you know, in uh, Mag let's see, an MRI. Uh, invention and uh, now they are owned by car and you know, they're still making the things in all sorts of configurations big well I started to say beautiful dare I say beautiful but big gold plated models and everything I at the uh, where was it NRA meeting I guess or shot show NRA meeting I think I uh, I talked to Justin Moon about these things and uh, he said yeah just let me know which one you want to try out he'd send any of them and I kind of forgot about it for a while, and then it, it hit me. And I went back to their website and looked around and said, we've got to get one of these. Got the ammo in. And, and I thought, well, you know, some of those are pretty wild looking. Why don't I just get one that, that looks nice, that might be one you'd actually buy, you know, that I might buy if I wanted a Desert Eagle. And I just decided on this one. But I said, well, I'll just uh, go to the Buds, you know, get it from Buds, and it'll, you know, go up on the e-gunner auction. So anyway... Uh, but uh, they're they're an amazing creature. Let's let's fire it some more. I've got a couple now. It comes with one magazine, okay? And uh, John and I bought a couple just so we'd have it. John thinks he might want one someday, okay? That's how strange he is. So if he does, he'll have a couple of magazines. But it just comes with one magazine, so that's what we'll send back with it. So let's shoot a couple more of these things. We've not had too much trouble with it at all. Probably had a couple or three malfunctions, maybe. And I think a couple of those I was not really limp resting, but you better have a hold of it really good. So I kind of blame it on that. Uh, a one of them on that. And then the first one was in the, like the first magazine. So I think it just, it was brand new. So I don't know. But it's generally it's been doing fine. Been doing fine. So uh, we'll see how it does. Magazine holds seven rounds. It, uh, it's a big old, two by four looking thing and, and it feels a little bit like that but other than the weight it doesn't feel horrible okay I mean it's it is kind of blocky but uh, the rubber grips you know help a lot and I guess we ought to take out a watermelon see if it's watermelon worthy 50 caliber I believe it worked there's another two liter <laughs> oh man, there's one sitting by that garbage can. Let's take him out. Oh, boy, some concussion. Let me shoot this paper target. I'm just going to probably put one round on it. All right. Let's do it one hand. All right.
Boom. I always want to get my ears in tight before I shoot. Well, I put another one on it. What the heck? All right, bullseye. <laughs> I can't shoot the steel targets. Uh, the damage would be, uh, I don't know. well, I don't know. It'd be a real test for AR-500, wouldn't it, at this close range? But I don't, I don't know if I would trust it, you know, not sending some of it back to me and John. Let's see. Now, I've got an old uh, uh, diesel fuel can there that's got dirt in it and crud, and I've been meaning to toss it or do something with it. So I've been saving it for a video at some point. All right. <laughs> okay. I think some of the water had leaked out. She's empty. Never fear. I have more ammo. A chunk. All right, I'm going to try those two liters there. Oh, wow, man, what a blast! There's another bowling pin. Let's take him out. Rolled him, rolled him. Okay, we got enough to try the gong, don't we? Let's try the gong. Now it shoots a little uh, high to a point of aim, so I gotta hold under it. <laughs> Did you notice how fast it got there? Uh, it's a 300 grain bullet and it was there immediately. I might just try a, a goat. Yeah, I think going high. Let's go high on me. So uh, I would have to get it uh, zeroed in and the sights I want and everything. If I were going to buy something like this to hunt with, uh, as far as any precision you know, type shooting if that's possible with something like this and actually it is i do think that i hit the 230 yard gong with the 44 magnum this one it would take some practice because you have such blast with it that it really makes you want to flinch it's uh it, it just does you know the muzzle break and everything uh so you'd have to get used to it and it, it, it just we don't have a ton of ammo we've got enough for you know a couple three videos but i didn't want to just stand out here and shoot you know 50 and 100 rounds you know trying to get good with it necessarily <laughs> before i send it off send it back we'll let whoever buys it get good with it okay but uh it, it is interesting i'll have to say uh desert eagle man let's see let's load up some more ammo empty magazines look at these big monsters oh boy it's a big round it uh and you know if, if if you want the biggest round you can find in a semi-automatic uh, handgun i guess this is one of them there's only two or three guns i think chambered in this thing and uh this is one of them this round came around in uh i think around 89 along in there and uh, this was the first firearm you know chambered in it the desert eagle and of course, a lot of people think that anytime they see a Desert Eagle, it's a, a 50 AE, but that's not the case. The thing's available in uh, well, several calibers. I think this one in 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, and then 50 AE, I believe that's all. But uh, again, check the website. There are so many different configurations of these things. Huge, big barrels and uh, all sorts of things. Just whatever you might need. You know, whatever you think you could find a holster for, right? Need. Did you notice I said need? <laughs> oh, big old round. You know, I like big rounds. Big lead, heavy lead. So this is kind of right up my alley. I'm still not sure, though, about the firearm. It, the verdict is still out for me. Uh, I, I don't know that I will need to own one of these. In fact, I may let John trade me out of the 44 Magnum. I don't really have a lot of use for it in the Desert Eagle. 
I have too many firearms that I enjoy. And uh, this one's not high on the list, but it's an interesting firearm. And in that sense, it is high on the list. It was high on the list because we have so many requests for it to shoot a 50, you know. And I had never shot a 50, you know, Desert Eagle, just like I had never shot a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum until I shot a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, okay? Now I've shot a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. So you have to do it before you have that experience. That was pretty profound, wasn't it? Uh, so, you know, now I've, I've done it, shot one, uh, will have shot one, whatever, a couple hundred times probably. So I'll be an expert, right? Doesn't take much to be an expert. Okay, let's shoot it some more, quit yakking. Got uh, three magazines here. Oh man, we got a couple of things. We uh, didn't want to spare the targets now since we have all this power. Not that it's really any more powerful, of course, than, uh, you know, 500 Magnum or a a uh, 4570, you know, uh, some stuff I shoot all the time. I shoot some really warm five, uh, so let's see, 45 Colt rounds, you know, in my Marlins and so. So, but it's big for a handgun. It's a big round. It's a it's a lot of power for a semi-automatic handgun. Let's put it that way. Especially a really cute semi-automatic handgun. I mean, that's a good-looking handgun. I got. I guess I'm getting sick in my old age. Uh, it actually is not as bad looking, really, as. <laughs> <laughs> as the desert eagle used to be to me i think it's because i like brushed aluminum or aluminum brushed stainless uh, it just it looks about as good uh in my opinion as a desert eagle can look how's that for being political <laughs> all right so yeah as i was saying we've got some targets here that uh we spared no expense or time right we have a drum an empty garbage can so let's shoot the empty garbage can Oh, it wasn't empty. <laughs> I'll be darned. It was full of water. Well, wouldn't you guess? Wouldn't you guess? Oh, I almost pulled up to shoot the cowboy. Let's get this. Uh, well, let's go ahead with the. Yeah, let's get the watermelon here. I'm going to back up a little bit. Let's see if he'll explode like the other one. Probably drench us, John. <laughs> Nice, nice. And I probably have one round. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll do a tactical reload. Get a full mag out. And I'll have eight rounds. That's the way I would carry it. I might just do that. I might just get me a shoulder holster and uh, carry one of these babies. All right, let's try those. Uh, whoa, I don't want to get any closer. Let's try the cinder blocks. All right. I get my ears in good and tight. <laughs> what happened to the top lock? <laughs> okay. Didn't take a full magazine that time. Well, let's just go back over there and uh, take a couple shots at the Ram again. He thinks he's gotten away uh, from these 300 grain bullets. And maybe he has. We'll see. There we go. In a cloud of dust. And one more on the gong. <laughs> the last one wow uh i i tell you that is a uh i won't say it's a thing of beauty but with that action open uh, there, there's something about it it uh i guess because it represents so much power i mean i'm we're all most of us shooters that still have a lot of kid in us of course uh i don't live and breathe uh you know the power factor and and uh got to have the hottest 44 magnums all the time like some people do whenever they shoot a 44 it's not a 44 unless you you're trucking it 1600 feet per second you know all that kind of thing uh but there is something kind of interesting when you have a handgun or rifle or anything that just does have massive power i don't like muzzle brakes and compensators generally speaking but i think it does help but boy you do get you, know, you get some blast back from that thing so Desert Eagle 50, 
my first big experience this week and uh, <laughs> we've created a disaster area here oh man let me get my ears back in tight and I think what I'm going to do is I haven't done this yet uh, uh, I'm not going to say rapid fire but I'm going to just shoot in maybe I'll shoot through that box that wooden box but I'm going to shoot into the barrel burn barrel uh, seven seven rounds uh, oh. just pretend it's a grizzly he's about to get me all right All right, not bad, not bad. Uh, it it doesn't hurt your hand really. Now you get some jolt. It it uh, you know I won't tell you it doesn't kick, but it's more pleasant to shoot than uh, oh a 22 long rifle. Oh, did I misspeak? Yeah, no, it's more pleasant to shoot than a 500 Smith and Wesson. Okay, because you've got the the action, the gas system. Uh, you know, in the muzzle brake, maybe too, but the, the gas system just being a semi-automatic, uh, it, it doesn't kick. Now, also, maybe the round doesn't have as much energy, you know, as the average 500 Smith & Wesson round. I don't know. I haven't compared the two that closely. But it uh, just so you know, you go pick up a 500 Magnum uh, Smith & Wesson and then pick up one of these with comparable ammo. And this one will very likely uh, be milder on the recoil and, and easier to shoot. Even though it's a big, big old wicked looking thing, okay? I mean, it looks aggressive. It's, it's, it's kind of wild looking. It's heavy, it's big, massive. The bullets, you know, the cartridges are huge and all that, but it really doesn't uh, kick as much. Uh, you would find it more comfortable to shoot than you realize. One of these in 44 Magnum, uh, 357, would be very pleasant in terms of recoil. You know, I've shot both of those those calibers in, in one, and uh, they're, you know, very pleasant, all right? So, uh, some people have made the comment on our other Desert Eagle videos that if you're gonna shoot a Desert Eagle, it needs to be a 50, you know? Well, I guess in some ways, uh, it, it does lend itself well to that biggest cartridge, because I can surely think of a lot of 44 Magnums and 357 Magnums that I'd rather have and pack around and shoot than one of these behemoths right here okay if i'm going to shoot those cartridges uh but now in a 50 yeah it does really in a lot of ways makes more sense and you probably ought to run out and buy one you know if you don't have one of these in your collection uh and a good holster for it you know what's wrong with you so <laughs> anyway the 50 i guess i you know what i'm gonna shoot two more shots can i do that john let's just i i don't know i'm just a glutton for punishment Let's put, uh, let's put four in, all right, just for the heck of it. I was about to wrap up, but I don't know, the urge just hit me. Oh, get those ears in tight. <sighs> okay, they're in tight. <laughs> oh, man. That pumpkin lion there. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no, I'll shoot the hanging uh, propane, or the hanging tank over there, or at it. Got him. Got him. All right. Now I'll be good and let y'all go get your dinner or your breakfast, whichever it might be. But uh, so anyway, the Desert Eagle, what I'd not tell you about, I didn't tell you a lot about the gun. These things have been around forever. You know, in this model, you got the rails top and bottom, so you could put anything on there you want. It's, uh, you know, it's heavy. It runs $1,700, $1,800. They're readily available. You could have one tomorrow, probably. In your grubby little fingers, you know, it's like my dirty fingers. So, uh, interesting firearm, Desert Eagle. It's uh, everybody knows what a Desert Eagle is, and uh, I hadn't tried the 50 caliber, so we thought we might as well. All right. So, I don't know what else to say about it except it's a handful. Life is good. Oh, since I'm still here, let me thank SDI for all their help. SDI is a fully accredited online gunsmithing school. Check them out at sdi.edu. We'd also like to thank 
Bud's Gun Shop and Federal Premium for all of their support. You can find us on Full 30 also now, and you can find the links to our Facebook pages and the other YouTube pages in the description of any video. So I invite you to check out the description in every video or any video, you'll find what you need to know. And you'd better do it.